everybody we're in the shop today and we're going to do a video on how we make arrows we had done a video like this in the past but we thought we could do a better job with it uh, we got some new camera equipment for Christmas so we're going to give it a go and see if we can't give you a better video on our process on how we make arrows alright so the first step in building an arrow is you have your shaft which is essentially nothing more than a wooden dowel and you cut it to your draw length the arrows we're making today have already been cut down to the draw length of 29 inches uh, we are using Port Orford cedar shafts and they are uh, spined out at 50 to 55 pounds and they are a 5 16 inch diameter okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sand these shafts and get them ready to accept our clear coat and eventually paint and things of that nature. And what we're looking for is we want that shaft to be not only completely smooth but perfectly round as well. you got to think this is something that we're going to shoot through the air with our bow and we want it to be as aerodynamic as possible. And that's basically what we're trying to achieve by sanding. So how we're going to accomplish that is we're going to take our shaft and place it in the sandpaper, folding sandpaper around it. And then we're going to sand with the grain lines up and down a set number of times. Any number you want is fine. Five, ten, it doesn't really matter. But what you're going to do is you're going to sand, let's say, five times. One, two, three, four, five. Then you're going to rotate that shaft about a quarter of a twist and then sand again five more times. One, two, three, four, five. Quarter twist turn, sand quarter twist turn and sand and by doing it in that method what you're doing is you're evenly sanding the shaft keeping it a nice round shaft to it and you're smoothing it out taking out any deformities alright so now that we're done sanding the shafts our next step is going to be tapering them so that they accept both the point and the knock uh, for this we have Boeing T knocks will be installing and we have some steel field points and to taper them what we have is our taper tool now the taper tool is basically nothing more than a glorified pencil sharpener it has a two blades on it one for the point one for the knock and they're set at specific angles which corresponds to both the knock and the points and they have these uh, V2 taper tools have a series of adapters which go along with the different arrow shaft sizes so with this one we'll start with the point end and what you're looking for in here is you want it to fit snugly and securely in there you don't want the uh, shaft to be wiggling around in there you want to slide in freely but you also want it to move freely as well because if it binds up on you quite literally you're not going to be able to taper it down to where it needs to be so what you're going to do is you're just going to go ahead and much like a pencil sharpener, just stick it in there and keep turning until you quit cutting wood. Now that we've tapered both our knock and our point and we're going to go ahead and install those components. Now with the knock, it's important to keep in mind of how the grain's oriented in comparison to how the string is going to go on it. And what we're looking for specifically is that we want the grain lines to run perpendicular to the string. So when we install the knock, we want to take close consideration of the grain lines, see how they're oriented on the shaft, and install the knock so that the string pushes across all of the grain lines at the same time. So once we have our position noted on the shaft, we're going to go ahead and put some glue in there and get that installed. Now that the knocks and points are installed, what we did was we went ahead and put a thin coat of clear coat on this shaft. We let that clear coat dry and then we went ahead and took some 800 grit sandpaper and just went ahead and buffed that out to take out any abnormalities in the finish. Also it roughed it up a little bit which will make it that much more easier to paint when it comes time to the cresting. Now as far as the cresting, we're going to do a simple black cresting on this. However, the sky's the limit when it comes to cresting. It all depends on how much time and how many colors 
you want to use on your project. Keep in mind, these are your arrows, and this is your opportunity to make them truly unique to you. Alright, so now it's time to turn these shafts into arrows. And to do that, we need fletchings. And to get fletchings, we need feathers. We're often asked how we acquire our feathers. No, we can do Thanksgiving at my house. I don't like to talk about it. But these are wing feathers from a turkey. These are right wing uh, flight feathers from that bird. And what we're going to do is, we're going to start here at the top, and basically as you look at the feather, you have the meaty side, then you have the, the lead side here. So if the bird was flapping, this is going to lead towards the back of the bird. This is the side that we want. So what we're going to do is start here at the top, and basically you're just going to start peeling it apart, keeping constant pressure, and just peeling that feather off the quill. And just like that, you acquire a fletching. Now, <clears throat> at this point in time, this is a full length feather. We need to get that down to our shield cut for this project. There's a lot of different tools you can use to get your feathers cut down to shape. There are feather burners, choppers, and scissors. All of these can be used to get your feather cut down to your desired shape. To cut these feathers into shape, we're going to use the chopper. The chopper is basically nothing more than a die cutter. It has a pre-designated design which will cut the feathers to our shape. In this case, a five inch shield cut. What we're going to do is we're going to lay the feather into the chopper with the quill against the stop, laying the die cut over, and then tapping it with our mallet, giving us a perfectly cut fletching every time. Now that we have them all cut into place, we're going to glue them onto the shaft. To do such, what we're going to do is we're going to run a bead of glue down the length of the quill to adhere them to the shaft. You don't need a lot, just a continuous bead is sufficient. So that's the process we take to make these arrows. Hope you found our video informative and enjoyed it. These arrows, as always, along with several others, can be found on our Etsy shop, so I encourage you to check them out. Thanks for watching.